Hey, everybody, starting to show off like this again. Uh, we usually wait till the end to uh, tell you guys to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't yet, please go to iTunes and subscribe, right, Mike? Yeah, come to iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio. There's all kinds of it. Pod, Podomatic. There's so many ways. But rate us. That's the key. You got to rate. That- Comment and rate. And another thing, just if you share, you see us share it on our Facebook, just hit the share and say, listen to our friends. I mean, it's so simple. And people always ask, hey, man, how can we support you guys, man? How do you guys, how do we get you listeners? Just share with your friends. Yeah. And I know some people are like, dude, I don't do Apple. I don't like Apple. I don't believe in Apple. I don't do iTunes. Fine. Just do it. Just to rate yes. and review our show. That's all. Then you can ignore Apple, but we need the rate and review. Because iTunes is the is the place where we right. get up in this in the ratings. That's the platform that everyone pays attention to. Exactly. So that's where you can you know what? We give this free content to you every week. It's fun, it's light, it's easy. We ask just type type a few, hey, this podcast is great. You know how many stars we give them? It better be five stars or don't bother. <laughs> Minimum four, but definitely give us five. If you like, kind of yeah. don't like us, at least give us four. Do, if you want to do four to give us a little incentive to improve, I get it. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to do anything less than four, just unfriend us and unfollow us. Because if, you, if you're not a four liking of it, why, why are you even here? <laughs> exactly. Right. And now don't use this episode. Me and Joe did go on about politics. It probably isn't going to be that exciting. Uh but at the end, we got – so listen through because you don't want to miss what we're talking about at the end. That I can tell you. You, just yeah. want, you don't want to miss. It's almost yeah. over, people. It's almost over. Uh, Emperor Trump will be the leader soon. So thank you for listening. Now here's the show. You're listening to All in Our Heads with Joe Fernandez and Mike Gaffney. Please enjoy the show. Yo. Yo, what's up, man? That was weird. I was call I hit the call you the same time you called me. So I'm oh, waiting really? for you to pick up, and then I realized the ringing was you calling me. I'm like, when the fuck is this mother gonna pick up? Then I see it says incoming call. I'm like, oh. What a what a coincidence. <laughs> this is so So as you hit it, it was just starting to ring on your end. You thought you was ringing on my end. Exactly. And I'm like <laughs> It says he's online. Why is he not picking up? And then I'm like, oh, the word incoming. That means he's incoming into my ears now. Oh. <laughs> What's up, man? How, how was your week? Good, man. Good week. Yeah. Yeah. Had a good, uh, good weekend of shows. Fun time. It's good to get back in the saddle, as, as uh, someone would say that didn't know how to come up with anything else better to say. <laughs> I'm like as, saddle As someone would say if they were named Wyatt <laughs> Yeah As someone would say if he was in a shitty 80's movie yeah. I'm back in the saddle again I'm too old for this shit Come on Bo <laughs> Let's get my Camaro Bust this joint <laughs> oh, remember those movies? Oh, they, well, that, it's cheesy now, but back then it was cool. Like the movie Rad. Remember the movie Rad? No. Where like the dude who's like an insane like bicycler, like he does like jumps and shit. No, it was pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> no, back then though, it was the shit. Okay. Like he would. It was just like this like regular eighties movie, but every once in a while there'd be like a a montage of him doing like bike tricks to like show how cool he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like he'd he'd get away from like his enemy. I, it's been so long since I've seen him. Like if he's getting chased, like he he's not just riding his bike. He's like doing flips off shit. Like he's really getting away. Like oh, with oh, style, yeah, yeah. with style. It's fucking rad. <laughs> he's getting away, but in the middle, he's getting like an eight point like stance on a on his pegs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, this guy's chasing me. Let me stop, go up on my front tire, spin it around, and then, okay, now we're going to go. But yeah, he's so rad. <laughs> Remember the movie, speaking of like cheesy movies and cheesy montage, um, North Shore? Yeah, I, I loved the North Shore when I was Me too, I man. I that shit. 
but it, like I've watched it recently. I watched it like three months ago, and it's kind of uncomfortable to watch now. <laughs> like yeah. the acting's really bad. Do you, I mean, of course, I want to watch all those childhood movies like in a day, like on a nice like snowy day. I want Rad, Breaking, Breaking to Electric Boogaloo, North yeah. Shore. You know, like nice. <laughs> all these like things that were just fucking amazing to me. <laughs> I mean, North Shore near people. You, she was hot. Did you ever see Side Out? What's that one about? It's the beach volleyball movie. No. no, no. <laughs> Bro, it's. <laughs> this just sounds like a horrible pitch meeting. No. Dude, side out. Dude, beach so, volleyball. All right. Put it, so, side out was one of those movies I found, you know, I'm a teenager at home. HBO is just on. And I wake yeah, up yeah. at three in the morning. Oh, and there's just pity. bikini clad broads. Yeah. And you're like, okay. what is this cinematic masterpiece <laughs> that I've woken <laughs> upon? <laughs> and, it, and it's actually, you know, it's, you know, there's a good volleyball. There's a dork guy who gets taught how to play volleyball and then he joined, you know, the fucking superstar. Cra- but the, you know, the cheesy 80s music that they write for the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, it's like side out. I said a side out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what side outs tune was. I wonder if that's on YouTube. <laughs> I'm getting sand in my toes. I said it's side out, and everyone knows. <laughs> Let's see what the side out movie theme was. They show that's they so like old. They're like, I don't even know what this is. Inside out. <laughs> oh, wait. wait, who? Is? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the whole movie. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, oh wait, Craig Moot Hart Inside Out, the best hairy chest. No, I don't want that. Oh, side out, Kenny Loggins playing with the boys. That's so it wasn't. Okay, remember that song? Probably. I don't hear nothing, Charles. So you don't your hear head. nothing. Oh, Not I, thought you hours. Were, I thought you would hear something. Oh, it's uh, in your head. You're just bouncing around, and none of the none of us are listening. Oh, that's weird. Maybe, you should be hearing it. Maybe the podcast is hearing it, but where I'm not at all. Very strange. We'll have to fix that for the future. But definitely watch Side Out. Okay. To, yeah, it's like an old surfer dude in LA lives in some shitty place, you know what I mean? But all the broads love him. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And the dude with the money and the, and the dude is doing good shit with his life, like, yeah. you know, befriends <laughs> him. It's fucking great. <laughs> Classic 80s fucking dork shit. <laughs> you know what I watched last night? Speaking of Classic 80, I watched uh, Wall Street last night. I fucking love Wall Street. Blue Horseshoe loves Anacott Steel. Yeah, what a great, what a great movie. Yeah, David Spader. David Spader always looks David like Spader, Who's right? David Spader. Spader. Is it Dave? No, oh, no, James no, not Spader. James Spader. Oh. Always looks like he's. He just has that look like he's a piece of shit slime ball. Yeah, always. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it wasn't even a piece of shit slime ball. No, but he always has a look. Like yeah. he, when, he, when you walk, when he's in, he's like, "Hey, buddy!" He's got that like his sideway mouth. Always talks like, "What's doing?" Oh man, it's like I never trust anything. He once he's in a scene, I'm like, "Oh, get away, man! He's not gonna be good. He's not a good man." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even in Blacklist, he's just like a bad guy. Yeah, I never got my wife watches Blacklist. I, I don't know. I watched one episode, like the final episode of the first season, so I had no idea what was happening. Yeah, <laughs> looked all right though. Looked all right, though. Uh, uh, dude, I got to tell you this story. It was a Friday night. I, uh, I'm i going to do that fundraiser at that hot comedy club. Yeah. So uh, I leave my studio around. It's, a, it's an 8.30 show. So I leave my studio 6.30. Mm-hmm. Put it in Waze. Waze is like, you're going to get there at 10 minutes to 8. Okay. Like, Fine. Perfect. Give me a half hour to chill. Yeah. Nope. That ain't happening. I don't know. Like, what, I don't know. There's something with Waze that when you start heading towards the city, like, it just has no idea. Like, there's no updates happening. It's, not, it's, it's start, like, it's like I don't it's, know. It's just thinking on the fly, but there's only one way to get over the water. So it's like, I don't know what you think you're coming up with, Waze, but there's yeah. only one way to get across, bro. So I'm like, it's like I'm driving for an hour, yet the trip still says hour and a half. Like, it's like, oh, even you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're oh, just yeah. like, why, man? It took me yeah, two yeah. hours to get from Woodbridge to fucking Yonkers. It shouldn't have. Ludicrous. Fucking GW backed up like a yeah. motherfucker. That's why they took you GW. I would have said take the parkway all the way up, go over to Tap and Z. That's how I would have went to Yonkers from you to avoid. From Woodbridge? 
Well, I would have went to right up the right up the term right up the parkway. Just keep on with the parkway. North. Yeah, well, I, you know, you, sometimes you just, you feel like Waze reads the traffic, sort of like, well, this shit sucks over here. It does, but when it starts sucking over here, you're gonna can wiggle around it. Once you get to to the GW Bridge, there you're is fucked. no wiggle room. There's no wiggle room, and bro, I have to piss like a motherfucker, dude. Like, I mean, there is no nowhere it, to go. There's it's no like. There's Where no peeing in your pants is a viable option. It, it's, it's, I get it. Like, I'm going to have to cancel the show. I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't make it because I just urinated and soiled my whole seat. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, luckily, I'm a slob. I have water bottles on my car, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, when I, I was holding in my pee for so long, it was so painful that I started taking off my button up. I was wearing it at the show. I, like, took it off. I put yeah, it over yeah. to the side. I'm like, all right, I'm sweating. I got to, yes. let's, yeah, we're going to make this. And uh, uh, it's just, so I'm like I I'm I, I'm gonna pee my pants. I gotta pee my pants. But okay, I'm all right. I have three bottles on the floor. I grab three bottles. I have three regular right. Poland Spring, and I'm like, if I miss, it's just like peeing my pants. I'm gonna have pee all over me. That's what I'm trying to right. avoid. I'm yeah, looking yeah. if there's a spot on the road I can get off of. No, there's nothing no. right by the fucking like not far from the toll, but it's still bumper to bumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take off my pants while I'm stuck in traffic, which is very hard to do when you're trying to keep your, you know, stay oh, in traffic. So now I take off my pants. Now I'm in my car, no shoes, my underwear, <laughs> white T-shirt <laughs> in traffic at the George Washington Bridge. So I'm like, I, I just I pull down my, my underwear and I, get, I have a bottle ready. But when I'm holding it in, my body, like my... My penis wasn't all it could be because I think it was like having some. It, yeah, it was like, a little. It was it's a little much. It was like Joe, one. Of, me to do. I know it was like <laughs> one of those silicone things you can't keep like a grip on those like yeah, tubes. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, keeps getting away. Like <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to aim this. Like, I'm still gonna get it all over me, but at least I'll have dry <laughs> pants. That's all. I'm thinking. Right. I'm like, I could do the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like shitting yourself. It's not gonna be like, do you smell like pee? It won't be that bad. Just to, right. So I finally get it in, and I I, I start Load filling up. this. bomb like, this is worth everything. Like, this is just – I don't care if I get a ticket for this right now. Yeah. This, <laughs> you know, you don't realize how many SUVs are in the world till you're till they're driving I, past <laughs> you. You got to try to pee? <laughs> so you got to pee in a bottle <laughs> in your car alone. Car. <laughs> like, if I had – like, if you're – like. If you're a passenger, it's totally different. But I'm trying to like break and ease up with traffic yeah, yeah, <laughs> while yeah, doing right, this because right. people are honking at me. There's no patience on the East Coast. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to like tap my brake while peeing. It was very tough. You, so you had you had to go through more than one bottle. So check this out. I'm getting to the top of this bottle, right? But of course, as I'm getting to the top of the bottle, the traffic kind of lets up enough where there's a nice gap where I could go like the toll booth is right there. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. So right. bumper to bumper until I'm at the top of the bottle and now I have a four car length so I can get to the toll booth. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have more pee so I don't even know how my, my body – I was able – I'd never be able to tie it off to like just no. so like stop. I, I don't have – it's usually like let's go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was able to do it, put the bottle in the cup holder. Pull up, and because of the traffic, I'm stuck in a cash and easy pass lane with a guy staring at me. No. I'm in my underwear, in my T-shirt. <laughs> I just looked at him. I just shrugged. I'm like, and just kept looking forward, <laughs> even though he's right next to me to the left. I'm just like eyes peeled. Like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So it's like <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hairy legs are out. Just it's winter, man. It's it's it's, it's, fall, it's cold, man. This this improper attire. Like I probably get yeah. away with this in summer because I have like uh, boxer briefs on, yeah, Box, yeah, yeah. black boxer briefs, know. white undershirt. To, so if he saw me, he'd be like, oh, maybe he's one of those gay dancers or something. You know what I mean? This guy <laughs> on his way to like beach party, something. <laughs> Fat gay dancer, yeah. very rare. And, uh, <laughs> Why does he have three bottles of yellow Gatorade? <laughs> Yeah. So then, all right, but I definitely got enough out where it's like, all right, I'm feeling good. I right. still have to pee a little bit, but it's not emergency situation. So you pinched it out, you tied it off, closed up that one bottle, and only did one bottle, you didn't go for another one? Not, well, so I'm feeling good. Right. So I, I didn't need to go for another one then. I'm really embarrassed. This guy just saw me. 
yeah, and yeah. I see the little shit accident that's causing this. It's barely an accident, man. Right. I'm like, how your bumper's not even falling off. Why are we stopped here? <laughs> this is one of many things happening. It was insane, like of, of causing traffic. It was just ridiculous. So I get over to George Washington Bridge, and there's still more traffic. So I'm like, Ugh, I'm starting to have to pee more, but it's not traffic bumper to bumper. I can pee. It's like. I'm doing three, four miles an hour, which is too fast to pee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not fast enough where I'm getting somewhere where I can fucking pee. Not to mention, if I get somewhere, I have to get dressed first before I hop out of the car. I can't just (laughs) hop out of the car. I got to put on a wardrobe now because I'm I'm not not ready for showtime. So... You didn't I, have headliner underwear on? I didn't have headliner underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> so I I finally, it opens up whatever the highway that, that Ridge Hill's on. Once I get off, it loops around. It's just open. So I'm yeah, yeah. fucking flying. Get to the get to the mall. So I don't know where this club is. It's just this outdoor mall. So I don't know which yeah. lot to use. So I'm like, first fucking lot I see, I'm going in. Which is wrong. <laughs> no, it wasn't the first lot. The first lot I saw, which was only no, a I'm block saying- away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like Lot C or whatever the fuck it was. Um, so I get in my spot, and I literally, because I don't know where the club is, I'm like, I can't go walking around. I don't know where the bathroom is. I'm peeing yeah, yeah. in another bottle in my car in this parking deck. Right, right. So I'm in the middle of peeing. KP calls me. I just answer it because I have the Bluetooth. He's like, what are you <laughs> doing? I'm like, shamefully peeing into a bottle parked in the parking deck at Ridge Hill Mall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm in my underwear, man. I'm in my underwear. There's families fucking putting bags in cars next to me. I'm, uh, I, 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 you know, I, whatever. I finish off and then a, a couple saw me putting on my pants in the car. I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, that was nice. To, I just, why? 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 Because I found my first parking spot I can find. There was not. It's a fucking Friday night. There's the lot is full. Right. But why does everyone that's parked around me have to be going home now? That's when they're going home now. Of course. They're going home right now. Right absolutely. now. Right now while Joe's putting pants on. Yeah, absolutely. It's like what happens when I'm trying to make an Instagram video. As soon as I click on play, start recording, the people next to me have to be fucking making movements. Ugh. So, fucking the universe. peed, had my bottles of pee. Fine, you know, went to the show. It does feel good, though. That even though everything you just went through sounds like sad, to let that first pee go into that little ass fucking Poland Springs bottle of water. It was one of the greatest amazing. moments of my life. It was exactly like, aside from being getting my wedding day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the greatest it's feeling. It's right one of the greatest feeling. It's yeah. <laughs> it's right there. It's like wedding, uh, peeing in a <laughs> bottle. Yeah. It, well, I'm just like, I I can't believe this has yet to happen to me at 41. Because I'm like, how do I need wide mouth bottles in my car now at all yeah, times? Yeah. I need fucking yeah, Gatorade just laying there. I just I can't risk it no more because it was yeah, just, yeah. I, ugh, it was scary. I was literally scared on many levels. I'm like, I'm scared. I'm gonna peel over myself. I'm scared. I'm gonna get pulled over burst and get my, a ticket for like public I'm gonna, perversion. I'm gonna burst my bladder and cause damage because it's got to be uncomfortable. It's got to be unhealthy to do this. Yeah, like I, I was literally if I had no bottles, I would have to stop my car at the George Washington Bridge and got out and peed and risk getting a ticket. Right, right. I'm like, I'm not peeing over my car. You like, know, when you got, want your brain... I, I'm going to have to pay 50 bucks to get the upholstery clean. I might as well just pay a $50 fine and not go through that. Right. Well, once your, once your brain... Once your brain says, okay, we this is no longer an option of holding... Yeah, you will. You will say fuck it to a lot of things like fuck it, fuck it. Yeah, because up until that moment, like every time I go to Long Island, I I do it every time. I know it's going to happen. I buy an iced coffee before I leave. But the traffic is always two hours of traffic. So if I'm to wait till I get on the on the easy side of Long Island before I get a coffee, I got to sit in no coffee for two hours. It's unfair to me. So. There's no way to get off on the route of traffic, so I have to drink this iced coffee, and inevitably, I have to pee so bad by the time I get on the other side of Long Island Yeah, that I can't – I sometimes can't make it. I'm so uncomfortable 
Like I'm not even completely fully sitting on the chair anymore on my seat. I'm way like hovering. I got my left ass cheek up on like the door. Yeah. Something, anything to relieve some sort of pressure. Yeah. You know, and then um, one time I was stuck in on Washington on a West Side Highway going to GW Bridge. No movement, not an ounce of movement, no movement, just dead stop. I don't know what was happening. And I had to go so bad. So we inch, we inch, we're inching. We're not going anywhere, but I inch enough to get onto the shoulder of the road and drive down an exit. Now the exit's 158. You come to the bottom of the exit and you're like kind of like under the overpass. It's like a shady area, but I got to piss. And I'm, I got a Dunkin' Donuts cup of coffee. I dump it out and I'm now peeing in that cup and I'm going and it fills instantly fills to the top mm. an extra large cup yeah. instantly fills to the top and i'm like so i pull now I'm, I'm driving this is happening as i'm driving i'm driving down a ramp peeing in a cup steering with my knees basically mm. steering with my knees i get to the bottom of the stop sign i pinch i make i make a right and i pull right to the side of the street and i go to finish peeing and a homeless guy comes to my window hey you got money i'm like are you fucking sick I'm paying, guy. I'm only a car away from being you. So go away. <laughs> I filled that Dunkin' Donuts cup up uh, three times. It's ludicrous. How how they don't have like peeing reservoirs in vehicles these days is like an option, like some sort of like thing to put over your puss or something you can Dude, fucking shark shove tank. your brajol in. I don't know if you're gonna call it. These are gonna be the names that you want to. Introduced to the marketplace, but <laughs> <laughs> I just come. I'm an idea guy. I'm an idea guy. I don't call. I'm an idea guy. You guys do the market. I don't call for the name. This idea. Come up with something. You put your brajol in. She puts she a coochie push. in, and then boom. <laughs> the coochie. How about we call it boom? Huh? We call it boom. Boom for drivers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ugh, it it's, should have something. See, when great. I was when I was a kid, I used to punch myself above the dick, like like in that fat area above my dick. If I had to pee, and it would go away. But that don't work as an adult anymore. Because you're an adult, so your brain even says that doesn't work. <laughs> no, but I used to punch <laughs> like myself above there, and it would go home. like, and then it would go away. No, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're creating an air bubble that's. I don't know. I don't man. know, it but I tried uh, it and that didn't work. I got to think it's got to. <laughs> so yeah, somebody course. saw me punching myself <laughs> in, in the driver's in seat. In the dick area. This guy's got problems. <laughs> <laughs> now he's taking his pants off. What the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> yeah, they need. I, in public urination, like, if you got a ticket for that, they should be like. Be like, what'd you expect me to do, officer? I'm gonna enjoy this shit traffic pattern. Yeah, yeah. What was I supposed to do? You think? Uh, you think? You think? Yeah. If I stopped when there was flowing traffic, yeah, that's different. You think I I had choices and this is where I chose? <laughs> Lane three of the GW Bridge yeah. under toll booth number six. You think that's yeah. this is where I wanted to pop out of the car? And ah, leak? Just. <laughs> but it was so weird because even that night in the club. It was just my body needed to pee a lot, dude. I peed like four or five times before I went on stage. Well, did you take Google that? Because that's like a big major problem. But it only happened one day, though. It's I like knew, my wife. I just said it to see where you would go with no, it. No, no, I, I went with it. I went with it because I asked my wife. She's like, no, problems don't like sporadically appear. Problems stay. I know. <laughs> but I was peeing like a motherfucker before oh, my Can I tell you something night. I heard on the radio? Yeah. Now, it was about how people like you and me, and me too lately can um, almost foreshadow your fucking issues in life if you're always kind of obsessed or, or concerned about health issues. You can bring it on. Oh, yeah. They say like uh, like try not to think about Just enjoy life. If you think about like I'm going to have a heart attack – they say like is a big percentage of people who do. Yeah, I know I'm gonna have one, but you know. Oh, me too. That's what I'm, you know, been thinking lately. I know that I'm well, gonna die hard. Well, that's what just, that's what guys in my family die of. It's not. It's like it's established. Yeah, I don't know what guys in my family die of, but um, I uh, no, I no. kind of 
I kind of feel like I'm going to die. Soon? Yeah, I don't know why, man. Maybe maybe you felt that way after you posted I ate six Reese's peanut butter trees or whatever you ate the other day. A little bit of peanut butter pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't after a vegetable dinner. <laughs> sure, sure. Even if even after I eat a vegetable dinner, I feel like, yeah, it's going to come. That's how it's going to go. Yeah. I have to get my checked. Fuck, my kid is going to find me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, <clears throat> sucks. Yeah. That's how, that's what goes to my mind. And I, every once, it's only, as you get older, the more moral, you know, the more mortal you feel, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're going to go soon. Oh, not yeah. soon, but who, I mean, I'm not saying soon. It could be fucking 30 years from now. Who knows? Yeah. But I'm not at the part where I got, where you can no longer say, I got plenty of time. No, yeah, I'm way past the part of you got plenty of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to start mean, taking care of myself for sure. My dad died at 65 a heart attack, but he didn't do shit for himself. So I feel if I do even half better than him, I should go at least till 67. Yeah. Like if I was 22, you know, worrying, you'd be like, dude, relax, man. When you're 47 and you're worrying, it's like, dude, you shouldn't worry, man. You really shouldn't worry, but you're right. You know, the clock isn't working in your favor anymore. No. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I was watching yeah. last night. I was watching. I don't know what movie I was watching. Some shit I was watching, and uh, and and the guy was like, "Yeah, my father. When my father died, you know, it took us a few years to get." And I was like, just thinking about like me dying and my kids having to adjust after me. It's like fucking just gets like sad. I'm like, I never thought like this. Yeah, but now that's all I think of. I think, especially like with heart shit, it's almost like like. If your like arteries and shit are clogging, it's like you can only just stop what's going on now. It's not like you could reverse it by eating better. It's like you could just stop right. it where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like, uh, uh. <laughs> like just, uh, yeah. I know. Well, I haven't eaten like as far as greasy. Yeah. Foods I haven't eaten in like, you know, probably like I would say six to eight, you know, six weeks, eight weeks. I haven't eaten any like greasy burgers, not like that. I'm not eating anything like that. That's good. Uh-uh. Wish I could say the same. I had a split a, a, a corned beef Reuben with Cody. <laughs> you and Cody are going to just laying there, feeling both grabbing your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Cody looking up like, you think that Reuben was smart? I don't know. I don't think maybe not. <laughs> well, he was hungry and I was eating it and whatever. Life's short, especially for him. <laughs> Give him a fuck, Ruben. <laughs> Motherfucker sits around all day waiting for us to do shit with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. What else we got going on? We got the election. You know that that's happening tomorrow. No. Yeah, it's is election. That a, is that upon us already? <laughs> I can barely tell. Us? I can barely tell. What did uh, I was watching John Oliver last night? And he's like, in this uh, Tuesday the eighth, the fi- <laughs> yes, the fi- the the last possible day that they could have waited, like we could have had it last week. Yeah, like, but this is the this the November eighth is the last possible date in the amount of time that they have to run an election. That's the last, of course, the last possible day you can make it. Yeah, they need to make this election instead of like, like. Every primary should be in the same day, right? Every primary, so yeah, you get, yeah. and then a month from that, that's when you vote on those whoever. Yeah, yeah. It should be like boom, boom. There's too much money to be made, so they'll never do that. They're gonna only lengthen it. They're like, this American people love this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is huge yeah. money maker. So I'm voting for Hillary, and I said it. So there you go. All right, I'm voting for Hillary as well. I got my my sticker for unless, my campaign. unless something comes out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was gonna say shut the fuck up. No. <laughs> listen, what did somebody listen, somebody say? I, I'll go back to what I said. I've always liked Donald Trump as a TV personality. I used to enjoy watching his show. The I I used to enjoy watching him be interviewed. I used to enjoy him on radio shows, but I don't want him to be my president. I'm a fan of Donald Trump the character. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump the president elect. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, like the human. Before this, I was. I mean, yeah, I, like, creepy things come out. But I, my, yeah, I found. I, I found. It, I, I. He was funny to me in a cartoonish way. He's like, 
I think Louis C.K. did a bit about it. He's like what you imagined you'd be as a billionaire. Like, there's gold, everything. My name big. Yeah, he's yeah, like rich yeah. and rich. Yeah, like, he's he's what you think you'd do. Right, right, right. He's like, you know, sort of like these other boring billionaires that just stay and just be billionaires. Yeah, yeah. So he was amusing see, to me. You see that Jim Jeffries bit, um, Ritu sent me a, a, a video of like a Jim Jeffries bit um, about uh, America. Don't be, don't be, don't be that country America. Like, don't be the, like, it's just, it, it's a, it's like a five minutes piece on, he's on a used theater stage doing jokes. And he said something about Trump. He's like, Trump's like, Trump just says words. He's like, just says stuff. And he's like, he's like, Trump would be like, I'm going to build a wall. Mexicans are going to build it. And he's like, I never heard one Mexican go, yeah, no, we're in. We got it. Like he just, he just says it. He just says things, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, uh, he's like, Trump reminds me of like a, a kid running for like class, class president, like an eighth grade. And he's just walking around going, we're going to have two lunches and there's going to be soda machines in every classroom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, uh, I just it'll be interesting we're, though. You, you we're almost at know. the end. I've gotten it. I I um I want to say if nobody knows who the woman is because a lot of people aren't paying attention. They, they they all they hear is sound bites, sound bites, headlines, being spoon fed, fake websites, and that's all that's going on out there. That's all that's out there. But his Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Co- uh, Connolly, uh-huh. is such a cunt. Yeah, but she's paid to be. I give oh, her. No, no. I give her a little I, leeway. I get it. I get it's her job. I'm not saying it's her job. She's really good at being a content. She's paid to be a cunt, nailing it. Fucking really good at it. <laughs> nailing it. Because, like she said, when uh, on Sunday when the <laughs> when the news report came out, when uh, Comey said, uh, "No, no new information in these emails. They're nothing." You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's nothing in the emails. Never mind. Everybody, back to where you were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. She came out and she was like, they were like, so what do you think of that? You know, now that she's like, you know what? We really haven't been focusing on that as part of our campaign. Like, what? What? yeah, I won't, I can't believe like we all didn't break down like robots. Like, can't, 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 can't. You haven't been focusing on Hillary's emails. She said that out loud and no one said, Rrr! no more speaking, cunt, shut your fucking face. That's, all you've been speaking about. Mm-hmm. She said, no, nah, we haven't really been focused on that. Donald's been focusing on other things. And then she today says, like, I've changed my invitations to uh, election night party to a uh, winning party, like a uh, win- like celebration party. Like she's just, a. I hate her. I hate her so much, but people look at it and take whatever she says. And they're just like, yeah, she said it. He said that she's Hillary's going to prison. And they're like, well, she's not. I ah, never mind. You know what I'm like what, what do you mean? Never mind. No, 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 no. Let's go back to the thing you said that she was going to prison. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, never mind. Anyway, Donald Trump is better. Better. He's the best guy. Ever. He's the best I don't. Guy ever. I, I just. It's just. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Oh my god! And then the, the hate that I get when I post those jokes. Right. We posted. I, we talked about it on the yeah, last, last week. Yeah. But then I instantly got another hate thing. You see that? No. I posted another joke. I did the Halloween joke. That's what we were talking about last week. Yeah, yeah. Where everybody came in angrily. Then I posted the joke about Melania Trump says if she becomes first lady, her first one of her biggest things is stopping cyberbullying. Okay. And I said she's only really concerned about cyberbullying because she's sick of Donald keeping her awake at night angrily texting yeah oh yeah i asking, saw that yeah uh, asking how to spell hey how do you spell certificate right it's a joke because donald trump tweets at 3 a.m i mean that's just, just a thing a joke because that's what he does yeah so she doesn't get woken up at 3 a.m that's the joke ha 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 that's it <laughs> some guy came on in the program piece of shit um <laughs> well you know that this is and a piece I know, of shit. Funny. barely hanging on to his shit existence um, came on and said, uh, Canada's looking for comedians. What does that even mean? Meaning, if you don't like this country, get out. Ah, uh, okay. Trump leave. And I'm like, that really hit me. 
I was like, holy shit. I made a little joke about how Trump tweets and his first reaction is leave. So then I said, hey, you want to do me a favor to clarify that before I go on a rant? I want to make sure I'm going on a rant for the right reasons. And he said, because uh, oh, I love you, Mikey, but, um, you know, I'm sick and tired of nobody pointing out the horse shit from Hillary. You know what? You guys don't believe, you know, whatever, you know, uh, um, all this ha- hateful shit. He's like, you know, nobody says anything bad about Hillary. And you guys, all you got to do is talk about him grabbing pussy, which has nothing to do with what I just said. Grabbing pussy like none of you say that. Give me a fucking break. We all talk like that. Anyway, take care. Like, I don't even know where you're getting the grabbing pussy thing. That's not what I was talking about right there. Because uh, people are irrational at these things. Yeah. So I just came on and said, you know what? It's fucked up is that I, I'm i joking about Trump. You guys hate – I mean he's one of these – he's a racist fuck. I mean there's that day. He's very racist. Right. He hates Obama. Hates everything Obama ever did. No matter if Obama did good stuff, from the heart, tried his best, cared about the people. Knows him together. Obama's a piece of shit, piece of shit, should be in prison with Hillary. That's it. Bottom line. Nothing does. Why didn't you fucking leave the country then? Right. Why didn't you leave? You've been talking shit for eight years. You don't like the guy in charge. Why don't you go to Canada? I made a joke about a guy running, and I gotta leave. Because I don't agree with you. What kind of America do you want to live in? Everyone has to, what are you fucking, everyone has to believe that? I have to have a gun to my head and be like, yes, we believe those words. Like, get the, you're a piece of shit, man. That's a piece of shit human. I'm sorry. It's a piece of shit to say that. I agree. I, but it, uh, these people this are This election nuts, has people, I, and I'm not saying the left doesn't have some nutty fucking whack jobs. Right. I'm not saying that, okay? Mm-hmm. But I don't see people being so like hate, like coming in with hate every time somebody says Trump. You get a lot of the Trump supporters will agree, but I don't see millions of Clinton fans jumping on going, you know, what about like, I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I just don't see it as much. Right, right. Um, It's like instant. And now. Everything is critiquing. Did you see that fucking selfie I posted? Someone had to say something to it? No, which selfie? The one with the little Reese's, the way I held the Reese's cup up. Oh, I thought that was on Snapchat or something. It was on, no, it was, uh, no, that was Snapchat was one, but I did one on Instagram that I that shared to Facebook. Oh, okay, no, I didn't see that one. Okay, I posted a picture of me holding the Reese's cup. Mm-hmm. Two minutes after I posted the picture, I got, this is one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, I get a notification. I go on it. And the woman says, I don't even know who she is. She says, um, the word, the lettering is backwards because it was like, you know, it was done with the flip camera. Yeah. The lettering is backwards. You know, you really should um, learn how to use your phone if you're going to take pictures so the lettering's not backwards. Don't feel bad, though, because so many people do it. However, the next time you do a selfie, just think first. Yeah. <laughs> so... What, the, uh, what type of boring life do you live that you had to put that? So I deleted it instantly. Ugh, what I deleted f- that comment. I'd like, delete oh, her. I'd be like blocked. I deleted it and it's ignored. Two minutes later, two minutes later, beep, I get a notification. Go on. What? You can't take a little criticism, Mike? I thought you were better than that. I'm like, I don't need criticism. Yeah, I, I don't, don't need. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> And I dropped it, went to sleep. She comes on to defend what I just said. She goes, but seriously, I left all of that up. I don't know if you're looking at it. No, I'm not looking at it right now. Uh, I'm going to read it. I'll go look at it. Uh, Yeah, read it. I don't feel like I'm going to look at it. Read it now. Hold on. No, I'm I'm doing something. No. Okay. All right, Sam. See you later, honey. I love you. Bye, babe. And that is at home with Mike Gaffney. A little behind the scenes right there. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So I said I don't need, and then I fell asleep. She then said, but you and others still need to know that when a picture is taken with lettering involved, a photo shouldn't be taken in reverse mode. It simply makes the photographer, for lack of a better word, lame. 
much like those who take a picture of themselves in a mirror while looking at themselves in their phones. That's how Shannon did. I was sleeping during that. Dustin Chafin came on and just said, Sherry, seriously? Like I know. I just saw that. Good for him. <laughs> so then I came back on and was like, uh, just so everyone knows, so, so everyone's up to speed here. I already deleted one comment from Sherry because I felt it was insane. However, she needed to make sure I got the message. And then I told her original message was, and then I said, I post political jokes and people feel the need to tell me that I'm wrong. Mm. But, um, yeah, I post, I post a political joke and people feel the need to tell me I'm wrong, but a goddamn silly selfie of me holding up. And then I spelt Reese's peanut butter butt backwards. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, and it's, it's infuriating and completely useless. I like what? Dan McRitchie's. I hate to be a dick, but the balance behind you is also not correctly spaced. <laughs> yeah. Properly <laughs> reversed with the tag showing. <laughs> <laughs> and then look what Frank came on. And he's like, dude, you're a complete piece of shit. How can you post a picture with letters backwards? This is the most fucked up selfie I've ever seen. Fuck you, Gaffney, you fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rich Woods, and they say that Facebook is overly negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's insane. That's insanity. Whatever that person is is an insane human being. <laughs> insane. Is she like a fan or a friend? I don't know where I know her from. She's not a personal friend She's at from all. from Dallas, Texas. She could have been like um I went there and did a show in Houston, she could have been that for that show, or I, th- I think she's just a friend from uh, somebody from what do you call it? Last Comic Standing. Uh, okay. Yeah, because our other, our only mutual is Rocky Laporte. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's got to be from Last Comic Standing. Probably. And that's what she comes up with. Ugh. And like, I don't want to be mean, but that's a complete waste of fucking time, lady. That's a complete waste of time. How are you telling someone, oh, your letter, I'm making a silly photo of me eating chocolate. It's fucking that simple. I just, I don't even know what to say to a person. It's just, they're just a miserable person. I mean, just mm-hmm. like, all right, bye-bye. Like, if it somebody did that to me, I would just unfriend them. I'm like, I don't need you in my life. I don't need a, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, we don't even know each other. I don't even need a yeah, fan yeah. like you in my life. <laughs> like if my career is riding on your friendship on Facebook, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm never a deleter guy. Deleter I never delete I'm people either, but no one's ever done something like that to me that I don't yeah. know. If it's a friend busting my balls, it's one thing. That's what I said. You know what if I mean? But came on, you- it was like it was like, bro, I love series. Like, oh, like I ah, dickhead. You know what I'm saying? Because we read it back. But Someone who actually says, well, the next time, think, man. You can't have pictures like that. Like, are you fucking retarded? Yeah, I'm not trying to sell this photo. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not setting up a gallery. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. It's like, what are you? I'm not endorsing the I'm product. I'm literally making a mindless joke just for yes. a three seconds of amusement for you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> and just scroll past. <laughs> like... You know, you know how much vile shit that I see on Facebook that I should be like, you piece of shit. That's what I'm saying. And I'm like, eh, what do I, what am I changing the world here? Come on. No, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I see some serious, crazy horse shit, and I'm like, eh, whatever, man. Yeah, right, maybe, maybe if we like, like Googled her and found that, maybe she's like the inventor of a photo flipping app that's not yeah. working out for her. So she's pissed. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I invented something for this. Why does the world not need it? <laughs> she was now, like, if, we're on, if you're on my phone, if I do it from my phone, if I just do it from my phone, like from my camera, it'll flip the words automatically. Yeah. But from the Instagram app, they don't. The Instagram oh, app yeah, doesn't, yeah. doesn't, it just leaves it the way you took the photo. Yeah. So I don't really care though. No. Either way, I don't give a fuck. No. What are you, Ansel Adams? You're going to go in there and fucking, it's a fucking. <laughs> It's a joke. So I'm not taking a picture of a corgi by a lake. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that video I posted of me and the dog talking to my boy Joe? Yeah, yeah. That was funny. 
<laughs> I love that guy. I love that app. That app's fun. Just talking oh. in a, in a, in oh, a what, Jersey uh, Snapchat. Voice. Yeah, oh, yeah, that Snapchat filter. I mean, just talking in a Jersey voice as a dog is my favorite. Is one of my favorite things to do. Once Instagram gets uh, filters like that, it's over for Snapchat. Yeah, I wonder if there's a like a. Because no, no, it's better about the Instagram stories. People I don't know can see my story, like that aren't necessarily oh, really? following me. It's like it's like public, which right, is right. pretty cool. You could like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I saw some dude kept looking at my Instagram stories. Then he. F- like friend requested me. Oh, okay. And so it's like like Snapchat's like you need to like actively find people. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, do you get do you get a lot of Snapchat friends of like like Arabs? No, I get like Arab people like follow me. Then I go follow them back, and it's all like Arab lettering and a lot of like weird, scary terrorist music and shit. Maybe they're trying to recruit you. I don't know, but it's definitely bizarre. No, nah, nobody's coming at me like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to get my number either. I don't even know. How Snap? Get... What, you, what you mean, your Snapchat? Yeah, I mean. What, what is your Snapchat? JF75. Okay. Maybe that's. Mike, Mike Gaffney 1. You know what it is? When I, I didn't, never thought Snapchat was going to be a thing. Like so you my, didn't put my, much thought into the name? No, my niece, down. she goes, you on Snapchat. I'm like, I don't know what that is. So she downloaded it on my phone. Right. And she's like, what do you want your screen? What do you want your name to be? So I'm like, I don't know what this is. Just put JF. Right, right. And she's like, that's taken. I'm like, JF75. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't change it. You're just who you yeah. are. I mean, it, it says my name is. Yeah, you can delete yeah, yeah. and start over. What am I? No, it says, but they can't. It's funny. You could, like, mine says Mike Gaffney. Yeah. But you can only find me by, by Mike Gaffney 1. Yeah. They can't find me just by putting my name in. Yeah. Which we know you're really Mike Gaffney 2 because Mike Gaffney got. The real Mike Gaffney one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you were Mike Gaffney one, you just have straight Mike Gaffney. <laughs> Not to be all like Sherry and everything, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we all know Mike Gaffney one would have reversed that photo. Come on, Mike Gaffney. Oh, oh. Mike <laughs> <laughs> Mike Gaffney one just has a little bit more thought when it comes to his fans. That's all we're saying. <laughs> yeah, it puts a little more effort into his selfies. Mike Gaffney one. <laughs> yeah, Mike Gaffney two. We're not shocked <laughs> that he's voting for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> fucking li- fucking liberal pussy. Can't even flip a photo. <laughs> not even try and make America great again. Not not one photo at a time. Even this fucking <laughs> socialist piece of shit. <laughs> well, man, you've taken this far. Well, Whatever, Bernie. Well, lover. I feel like this what? country's moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I have to take it far to get it back. <laughs> what does that even mean? That's the one thing I hate to like. Two, two, two thirds of people say this country's going in the wrong direction. I've never heard anybody say that in my life. Yeah. What direction do you want to go in? What do, I never th- even thought about the direction of the country. I'm like, I'm just uh, having fun till I die. <laughs> That's, yeah, and, and the people like, who say that, I will they because there's hate. I mean, there's. What is you, what? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Can you give me some examples in of two how, That's a lot. Yeah, I know how. Like, yeah, like just examples. Like, I got into an argument. There's a, a actress, Lisa Ann Wal- Walters. Uh huh. She um, she posts a lot of stuff, you know, pro Hillary, and she posted something explaining what happened with the emails last week, like when when what it really meant, like because Trump said there. She, thank God, Comey's right in the ship. He reopened the case because he's going to fucking put her in prison. That's what Trump said for a week. Yeah. Fine. You know, Comey, I, I respect Comey because he realized he made a mistake and he reopened the case because he need, he knows that she's crooked. That's what he said. Yeah. Which was not at all why the case was reopened. And all the retarded, you motherfucking retarded Trump supporters. <laughs> I, I was just sick of them. I, they, they support. I just love your such, political uh, breakdown. That's you my motherfucking ass. piece of shit. With all due respect, and then you, <laughs> then you can no on. respect. Anybody who regurgitates the, the the shit they're fed, I have no respect for you. You're a dumb motherfucker. You're dumb. You're a dumb human. You always were dumb. You were always dumb. This isn't new. You we just are finding out how dumb you are because now you feel you can tell us shit that you just heard. Trump tells you that she's going to prison and you post it like a fucking retard. A That's retard? what they do. Yeah, a retard. Okay. They're not even retarded. They're retards. 
<laughs> but um, yeah. So she put a little thing up. It was like a little four point bulletin. What actually happened, you know? And it was just it was simple. It was a simple thing. So I liked it. And then I was just reading some of the comments, and some guys like uh, some guy was like Trump 2016 on that post. Okay. And I just went under his. I was like yuck. Like I just yuck. Yeah. And then it was like, yeah, Trump's going to be your next president. And I was like, hey, man, whatever happens on Tuesday happens. Can I ask you a question, though? Can you give me five reasons, just five reasons why you love Trump? Please don't mention Hillary. Don't tell me how much you hate her. And don't tell me anything about he's a smart businessman because since we don't have any tax returns to look at that, that business of his, we can't use that. So give me five reasons. Please just give me five reasons. Right. I'll, shut up. I'll give you one reason. It ain't that lying, piece of shit, cunt, fucking murdering thief Hillary. That was it. I was like, so there you go. There's your hate. Right, right. There's your hate. You have no. So he's like, um, you know what? Fuck you, got Mikey. Like he's just calling me Mikey, I guess, because we're buddies. Um, yes. Fuck you, Mikey. And uh, you, uh, you, you know, you and the whole Hillary camp. Uh, why do you hate Donald Trump so much? Why don't you, you know, what I mean, like something back. And I'm like, dude, I'm asking you for one. Give, give me one thing. Just give me one thing you like about him, man. I'm not asking you to 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 not vote for him. I'm just asking. Can you tell me one thing you like? Let's turn this about what we like about our candidate, not what we hate about our candidate. Right. The other. So if you just tell me that, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get on. I don't care what Trump does. I'm trying to get on the board of what she has done and what I believe she can do. Mm. Like I look at all the stories that are given to me about her, not about him. When I'm researching, I'm not researching about what his stories are. I can care less. I research the emails. I research all about what it meant. Benghazi, you know how much I read about Benghazi just to figure out what the fuck people are talking about? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's murdering cunt. Okay, I gotta see what this means, and then I read it. I'm like, oh, that's not a murdering cunt. You, <laughs> he's not a murderer at all. Holy shit! Where do you guys get these words? Did you see that thing? Someone, someone posted talking about how many embassies, how many embassies, and how many people died in the embassies. Okay, like no, I didn't see that. There's a when Reagan was in office, there was thirteen embassies attacked. Okay. Almost, almost 400 people killed in the embassies. Okay. When G, when Bush Jr. was in office, there was 10 embassies attacked and like 80 people killed. Yeah. So that, that's like almost almost 500 people killed in almost 28. It was like 28 embassies and, you know what I mean? Yeah. And 500 people killed. Mm. Two investigations. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. And in the Obama thing, there was a one embassy attacked in <laughs> four deaths in one never ending investigation. Yeah. And like if you don't see that as a political thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't, and that's why I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? They they don't it don't Listen, no one's ever going to see – like that's what – it's just like like even today. It's like enough, guys. It's tomorrow. No one's convinced anybody of anything. No. No one. No one. No one. No one. We already gonna, know. Just fucking everybody should shut the fuck up. But I am going to – if you if you tra- if you challenge me to answer why, uh, I'm yeah. going to get why. Yeah, you I, don't, I don't even – I don't even uh, – I don't even engage in that shit no more. I ha- I never engage, but especially on my wall because I don't want to do that. But it was on somebody else's wall. She ga- engages all day long with people. Right, yeah. So I'll jump in and talk, but I talk and I never curse anybody out. And I just ask. So in this same in this same conversation, a guy comes up in this not in my conversation to somebody else. And he says he goes, um, "Yeah, you're gonna vote for Hillary," you know. Uh, she's got so many cases against her. She's going to be, you know, going to court. And someone said, well, in the same vein, Donald has, you know, the the rape allegation charges that he has to face December 16th in court. Yeah. And the guy said, nah, it's not true. Not true. I've looked for court cases and docket numbers. Not true. Docket He's numbers. Not- yeah, I swear to God. You're I bored. You're bored. I would go find a docket number. 
But this guy says he could search public records. They're all public, and you can find docket numbers and case numbers, and there is none. That's what this guy says. Good. So another guy goes, so, <laughs> shares a link. Here's the, here's all the documents if you need them. Yeah, I don't try. He's like, okay, here's the photos of the documents. Yeah, but there's no judge that signed it. I'm oh, sorry, page two where the judge signs it. He's like, he's like, um, yeah, I don't know, man. You don't know these. Some of these websites aren't real. He gives them like seven different legit websites. He's like, no, these are all have the documents. Yeah. The guy's like, the guy's like, yeah, well, I can't seem to find it on my computer. And then I came on. I was like, bro, there's an article. Trump does not deny there's a case December 16th. He des- denies the allocations, but he says he has a court case. Stop denying the case. It's there. Doesn't mean he raped anybody. I'm just saying there's a case. Right. Just like the emails were a case. We don't know if there's anything there, but it was a case. Right. You know, this this rape thing is a case. Who knows? He might not have done never did anything to that girl, but there's a case. Right. Don't deny the case. And he's like, Yeah, man, I appreciate that, but I don't know. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, fuck. Holy fuck. This guy is so far gone that you're not even and I'm not arguing with him. I'm like, just look at the case. Here's the case. You can see it. Nah, I don't even know. Like, oh, you do know. You can look right there. It's just a useless, useless. That's a guy who doesn't want to know. That's the thing. No, well, that's don't want to know. Listen, because that's bottom line. They just don't like her and they don't care. That's right. basically where my brother's at. He's like, yeah, it's, he's voting for him because he's not her. Right. And that's whatever. It's just at this point, it's like, just get it over with. Yeah. It's like. I just want just, people like I even put a thing me. last week. I go, uh, anybody have any thoughts on the upcoming election? Yeah, I know. I saw that. <laughs> and some people saw the humor in it, but then these yeah, two yeah. guys started going back and forth. So I kept interjecting in theirs, but with other ludicrous. I put, I like turtles, like in between <laughs> one of the yeah. things. And I go, uh, salted or unsalted caramel thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> just like, come on, guys. Like, this is so stupid. <laughs> No, you're never not convincing anybody. I haven't tried to convince. So I don't. I just don't pull, post anything. But yeah. I believe, you know, it's maybe too late for this. It probably yeah. is too late for this. But uh, you should be talking positive about the person you're going to vote for, not that you hate the other person only. Yeah, find well, something positive. I don't give that, a fuck. That'll never find, be. That'll never be. That's just the way it is. That's a piece of shit. Listen, country. elections are popularity contests. Everything's a popularity contest. Nothing's nothing in this world. Is about um, talent or resume. It's all about popularity in a look, and that's yeah. all it's out. It has nothing to do with any nothing. Our 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 business, political business. It's all about because yeah. they talk about uh, she's just not that personable. Who gives a fuck? You know she what has I mean? no personality, and she doesn't. Every they literally... always look for the wrong thing. Right. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. You're going to be able to find it. Yeah. you. I mean, I'm not looking for anything golden in fucking in Trump. Listen, we I'm got it, it. It went back to when JFK ran. I remember talking about it in media class in college where that was like the first election. that was really fought on TV. Yep. Where JFK had a professional makeup artist. Yep. And wasn't yeah, and, sweating. And Nixon, and Nixon didn't. And it's just because people and it's just people like that. Yeah, yeah. It's the American people's fault because we're Absolutely. dumb. We're dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the way but it I'm is. Gonna, and that's and it is true. But I I refuse to stay dumb. And some people don't. No, no. Yeah, no. I'm just saying. I, yeah, I just. You I, know what I mean, like, I'm I, just gonna take care of my own side of the street, and then I'm not gonna try and change. I'm I'm never gonna try and because even though I know I'm, even if I know I think I'm right. I know I can't change anybody's mind. All it does is aggravate me. I'll only talk politics with someone if they're a normal person. Like me and you last week on the podcast disagreed on something, but we had a normal adult conversation. Right. And then that just ended at that. Right, right, right. I could do it with other – like if you're just a psychopath, I'm not – I'm not – I'm not engaging. And I can tell you're a psychopath by whatever the first sentence is. Like, yeah, that's a lunatic who's obviously in another universe. Right. (laughs) You know, so like I see if somebody posts something, for instance, Jamesy posted something about there was an article. Chappelle, Dave Chappelle spent time an hour last night of his set talking about how much he hates Hillary and how much, you know, 
something about Trump, and and and, and everybody was like, w- he shared that article, and he was like, wow, and then you know everyone was like, yeah, finally someone on the left talking out. The only source for the article is the Observer, which is a right wing, uh, extreme right wing website. Yeah, and other news, other news sources were reporting on it, uh-huh. but reporting that the Observer said. So you understand what I'm saying? So Fox News, like according to the Observer, well, oh, the, according to the one source, is anybody that was in that show? Yeah, but even if, even if he did though, because he, you know, he did vote for Hillary, and 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 listen, you could no, I you could be critical of the person you like too, and I think that's what's wrong with people in elections. It's like both sides. Yeah, not they I, never I are critical even to their candidate. They're like mine's perfect. No, I get it. I get that. I'm saying is the sharing of links that aren't really true. Yeah. Yes, he whatever came out. I'm like I didn't even I don't even know. I looked everywhere for additional sources on the story. If your only source yeah. is the one source against you, I got to I want to see more sort. Just give me more sources to look at. I can't look at one. Yeah. There was hundreds of people at that comedy show. You know what I'm saying? Only one dude is reporting, reporting it. I just wanted like to have yeah, seen the rest. Maybe maybe this material will be on Saturday Night Live next Saturday. This coming Saturday. I hope so. But yeah. I was saying is, do you know if it's somebody else said? I don't think this is a true article. It looks like it might be fake. I I mean, or a fake story. I said, well, I don't see any other stories but the one story. So why I look into it? I want to see what I love Chappelle. My thing is, so what if a guy. So if Chappelle talks against her, it's like, the, remember the joke? Remember the Chris Rock joke? I'm not afraid of black people. I'm afraid of niggas. Yeah. Remember that joke? Yeah, yeah. Right? Great joke. Smart joke. Who loved it the most? Racist white people. Oh, yeah. Love that joke because that's what they're like, yeah, that's what we say. That's what <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's what they mean. And if you talk to a racist white dude, what they're saying he means is the ghetto brothers who are going to fucking, they live like shit in the streets. That's who he's talking about. No. He's just talking about a dude that's a shady black dude that's trying to rob him. Yeah. Doesn't mean every guy with baggy pants is the guy he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. But that's how they all took it. So if Chappelle did say, you know what? Fuck Clinton, whatever, whatever. They then say, oh, see, look, at he's against her. Like, who? Oh, great. He's against her. Right, right. But like, so what? I just wanted to see what else he said about her, but I couldn't find anything else. It's just the, that one article. And I was like, oh, I guess that isn't. The, I don't even know if that's true. Someone else posted Hillary and Obama are go both going to prison. That's the headline. Yeah. Of the article posted the article and said, "I know nah, this is awesome. I I knew this was going to happen. Not sure if this is true, but it may be true." That's what he said. Yep. <laughs> How do you? <laughs> Here's an article that I don't know is true, but I'm posting it anyhow. <laughs> like that's it, man. You're all right with just not even knowing if what you're saying is real. Yeah. Oh, did you see Bill Maher's Obama interview? Yeah. Like oh, it, it was boring. It was boring to me. However, there was one spot that Obama really taught, like spoke. He's like, how how many? websites and how many news sources are out there there's so many filters you got to get through before you get to the real story yep there's so true. many yeah you know you can say we can say right now just we just learned that hillary had a heart attack and put it out there 2700 people are going to share it before they even know if hillary had a heart attack or not yeah well you just got to hope people are smart enough that's the, th- the key to realize bullshit news. And so I don't know if they're smart. If it says what you want, if, if right now a, a headline came out and said, the Yankees got Kershaw and uh, what's the other guy? Um, Kershaw, who was the, the great starter for Chicago this past? Arietta? What was that kid's name? Arietta? Is that it? For the Cubs? Yeah. Well, they have Arietta Hendricks. I mean, uh, Hendricks, right? Hendrickson. Yeah. Say we got a. Say you saw an article. We just got Kershaw and Hendrickson. We want to believe that article. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I want to believe that the Yankees just picked those guys up. Right. 
I don't even want to click the article to find out it's not true. Right, right. Like right now, we got two great pitchers. I'm good. I'm going to go on that. We have a shot at winning the World Series next year because it says what I want to hear. Mm-hmm. If yeah. the article says the Yankees are folding up and closing up, they decide to sell the team, they're like, get the fuck out of here, man. Now you're going to read it because you know it's a bullshit article and you want to make sure it's bullshit. But if it's saying something you believe in, you don't do any research. Mm-hmm. I am the opposite. Like before I get excited about something, I want to be like, well, let me just see what before I get excited. Yeah. And seven out of ten times, whatever the, the, the headline said that I was happy about is usually a bullshit story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But people are – it's just like, a you know, there's no going back. No. You know what I mean? It's just the world's changing. People are just going to write whatever they want. It's the It's the freedom of the web. You know, you don't want you don't want your news controlled by the government either. You know no, what I mean? no, it's so not. that's what Obama said that too. He's like, you can't have that. No, that's what like uh, you know North Korea has. Right. That's why you know it's like uh, Kim Jong Il. They said only shoots holes in ones when he golfs. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, because you know that's proper reporting. Well, you, you 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 never you didn't like that show. Um, what was it? Um, the newsroom. No, nah, I didn't like I. I didn't like it. I just don't like. I didn't like the way they talked. I felt like yeah, they talked in like, mo- like in monologues. Yeah, yeah. And you're mm-hmm. just like, are you guys for real? Like, I can't. It was I, speeches. I just, it was, it was speeches. Like I can't speeches. do it. It didn't feel like real to me. I couldn't connect with it. Yeah, yeah. I think if you're, listen, I get like if you're, I, I find myself to be very much in the middle politically. I feel like if you're ultra liberal, that show really spoke to you because all those speeches were pretty ultra liberal. Right, right. You know what I mean? So it was probably like, wow, I like what this guy. I remember people would share um, video from that show. Like, finally, someone said it. You're like, <laughs> dude, it's a fucking fictional show. Are you kidding yeah. me? Of course they said it. There's no stakes. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, there's nobody <laughs> stopping them from saying it. It's, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean a guy did a speech about how America should be a utopia? Yeah, yeah. I think everybody would like everything to be good. Yeah. <laughs> like even even the people that don't agree with you with like a good world where everybody has everything, right? <laughs> yeah, even and it doesn't cost you. anybody anything, right? <laughs> you know, it's like I just you know. Oh, that, so that those, those, are, that, those those people that shared that video are just as idiotic as the other people. Oh my god! Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but the thing about that show was it taught like you know how they they like put a full a false story out based on a false. Like um, on a uh, a bullshit source. Yeah, they all bought this, but they showed how much like vetting it took to get the source to make sure the source was right. Yeah, and like everybody, everybody confirmed the source, and they got and they traced the source to where it, they knew it originated. And then when they put the story out, the story was false, mm. and like it really all it almost it collapsed the news organization because they were held accountable. By the oh. American people and by the the company that owned the the newspaper, the the news organization. I don't. Does that happen for real? Because like there was that that story, I guess, last week that uh, the radio guy, but he's also a TV personality, but a Fox News guy, said uh, came out and was like, "Yeah, Hillary, you know they they're now charging her. Looks like there's charges, or whatever." He came out on his radio show and said it. Right. But he was he was fed a bullshit story. And regurgitated it like on professional news. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and then he had to come back and say, oh, I'm sorry. I asked my producer if it was a legitimate story. He said it was. So it's not his fault, but that system is even, is it even trustworthy anymore? Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course they're going to say things that skew. Like when the email thing broke, Fox was very skewing. They weren't saying she's going to prison, but they weren't saying she's not. Right, right. You know what I mean? And CNN was doing more of the this is the facts. You know, it's not a it's not a criminal investigation yet. So they were more showing it for what it was. And Fox was like leaving it up to you to figure it out, which I get both angles. I totally get it. Yeah. But are they held accountable if they tell a lie? Is there any accountability or are they supposed to be held accountable by the American people? I don't know who holds them accountable. If a, a, if a legit news source like CNN, NBC News, CBS News, if they gave a false story and shared it with graphs and all kinds of stuff and we come to find out that story is false 
and now they're discredited. Is it something that we would, as American people, need to go, well, they're discredited. We're not watching anymore. Or is it something the government says, you know what? You guys don't tell real. No, the government will never. I mean, and even, when supposed- you do, even when you dis- – dude, dude, you even hear like they have those things called fact checkers now. You, mm-hmm. That's a big term in this election, the fact checkers. Yeah. People yeah, are like, yeah. yeah, who's fact checking the fact checkers? You're like, I don't know. We, we're not going nowhere. That's why I'm like, I'm so <laughs> done with this. I'm so done with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just, it's like, nobody believes anybody. Listen, man, just fucking leave. You know, I'm going to watch the election tomorrow. Results come in. I just, I just want it to be over, man. I just want it to be over. I want dumb people to shut up about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, fucking dumb people telling me, I just, I just can't, I can't, I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. I'm, I've, I feel like this is a relationship I can't get out of. Like it's like it's like I fucking you know like I. Just yeah, I fucking... think I think it's like I said it's it's too late now. But uh, I, I I really wish that for this for the most part of this election we were talking about why we like like I think Bill Maher snapped like he said something last last week or the week before when somebody was like you know well they're they're the same they're both shitty and and, and like Bill Maher was like stop saying that. Because they're not the same. Listen, it's 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 both political parties' fault. They allowed Trump to take over their party, and the Democrats pushed through a bad candidate because they right. wanted her. She was an awful yes. candidate. Yeah. So it's both of their faults for the shit storm that it is. Because yeah. they do. Bo- Listen, if you if you just didn't know who was who, right? And right. you put all the stuff on the table, you would think she sucks too. Right. Like if, you know what I mean? If you, there was no way, if you just looked at, oh, this person right. did this, 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 and this, 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 and, like you'd be like, ugh, I don't know. Right, you know what right. I mean? So it's like <laughs> they do both suck. But unfortunately in this country, we they there really is only two choices. And I'm tired of people saying there needs to be more choices. Listen, man, I've been to the diner with me and a bunch of other people. We can't make choices. We don't need more choices. Diners give you too many choices. Too many choices doesn't help you. You wind up going with the same shit you always get. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> For, you know, if we have to figure out something that needs working on, it's the fucking electoral college. That's what needs to go away. Yeah. Well, no. I, well, not if you, because Trump may win the popular, but may lose the electoral college. I don't think so. It'd be the other way around. No, no. If, well, if Trump wins the electoral college, he's our president. No, I know. I'm saying no. He's not going to win the. He's not going to win the popular. He could very well could. He's very no. po- he's very popular. Oh, I didn't say he wasn't popular. No, he's, he's very not- popular, but he's not popular in the right states for the electoral college. <laughs> That's the problem. Probably m- more people could possibly vote for him and still he'll still lose. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, well, we'll see. He's got big, right. his rallies are bigger. Well, he, because it's easier to reach angry people. Right. But I'm it, saying that was, uh, but numbers, I'm saying numbers. If if there yeah. was if, you know, Bernie Sanders had numbers, you know what I, I mean? Know. It's all the only reason why he's not because of stupid super delegates and all that horse shit way of yeah, scamming. Yeah. The primary way from people you you want to be your candidate, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just a bunch of horse shit, dude. I mean, that's the only thing that I like about Donald Trump is he's really brought to light how schmarmy both sides are. How, like, listen, when he says the word rigged, people say people think like, um, oh, like voting booths and stuff. But if you take away that part, if you, it is so. This never been more evident of how rigged it is of who they want as president. Right. You know what I mean? It's she's part of that fucking class that they want in leadership. They don't want any outsiders. They had two right. outsiders running and they're like, we don't want you. We want even if it's the other party, we're going to vote for her. That's right. how much we don't want outsiders fucking up this thing we do where we fuck you people over. And I think that's what drove Trump's uh, followers that aren't racist. Right. Like I would not consider my mother a racist. Right, right. But she's a Trump supporter. She's voting for right. Trump. I don't consider my brother Mike a racist, but he's a Trump supporter. You know what I right. mean? It's a, and that's that's the sad thing is I think people also don't look like obviously there's a sect of a population that isn't racist that does feel disenfranchised that he's speaking to. And right. even Hillary said it. I want to speak to you people cuz I you guys do have problems. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Uh, my parents are, are both voting for uh, Trump as well. And uh, and it's because and, – and, and they, the reason why they're voting for him is because everything they're told they believe. So, yeah, you know, everything they told. He's being able to paint a picture so bleak of a country that isn't that bleak. If the system is rigged, I'm not going to say that there isn't some serious, serious system issues. But if I'm to believe, if you want me to believe that all the right wing Republican establishment, the Republican pundits who have been Republicans 25, 30, 35 years are now excited that Trump is going to finally get rid of the corrupt politicians, I am not that gullible. A lot of Trump supporters believe, truly believe, that Republicans are sick of the establishment that they've been a part of for 30 years. They truly believe when the Republicans say that Trump is here to fix the establishment. It's like, dude, you are the establishment. You can't possibly be telling me that you haven't that you're not part of the establishment. You're just trying to tell us that you've been on the outside. You've been inside politics for 35 years and you've been on the outside. Mm. Don't, I don't, that's horse shit. What happened is they realized that that was a real sensitive issue with the world and the country. And they can say it now. And people both, they see how easy people believe that they just say it. You really, I mean, people really think that if Trump wins, that he getting in there time to mix it up done with the establishment there's no way well listen no well that you can't say that either because it's like uh it but that's that's what when people vote they're always voting for unrealistic things that they hope a person's gonna do listen when obama ran people are like we're gonna get a, we're gonna close guantanamo that was his big thing he didn't we're gonna get single payer health care he didn't. You know what I mean? Like you vote for someone based on these promises they give you or, or, or hopes that they're going to do something for you. Right. And then they're not going to get it done. So you can't even say that because that's what, what hope, I'm not saying. That's what a, people a, a vote policy. on. You can't be like, well, I'm going to vote for this guy because he's not going to do anything that I want. No, I'm not saying policies. I'm talking about you're talking about how a system is rigged and how you're going to come and buck the establishment. Oh, he and already letting- has, and it's gonna it's it's changed. He has changed the way elections are. If he's done anything, he has bucked the system, and it's not going to be the same from here on out. We're not going backwards with this shit. It's going to get crazier and crazier. The Republican Party is going to collapse after this election, and you're going to have a you're going to have a alt right party that follows Trump, and they're going to get in one day. Well, that's here's what I'm saying. What he is doing is he's realized he's tapped into a system to a group of people who are out there. He's telling them what they want to hear. And the Republicans who are already entrenched in fucking politics are saying, yeah, no, we, we agree with him. We, we feel that way, too. It's like, wait a minute. You've been there for thir- 25 years and you've never said you agree. Why? Because you were afraid you were going to lose your seat. No, you weren't. Yeah. I just don't believe that you now are awoken. Yeah. If you're a new to the polit- political scene and you like, you know what, I like all Trump's ideals, okay. But if you're someone who's been 25, 30 years in the game, talking, never speaking like this, never speaking the words of a Trump, but now all of a sudden these are your belief systems too, I don't believe you. You're saying whatever you can so you can get your leader in so you'll go right back to your control. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, what are you it's just – that's like – I just don't believe everything you're fucking told, man. Don't believe what you're told as the word. It's not – that is – I'm not believing everything I'm told. Just yeah. don't believe anything you're told. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Like I said, I'm so sick of it, dude. It's just – it's it's almost like bores me to the, to the tears. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like – it's like – it's just because oh, it's, just, it's just ta- I, I, I'm interested in it, but it's just like it's circles. It's just circles. It's just – Talking well, that's circles. what I keep trying to say to you, and we we keep doing circles. I keep trying to say that from the beginning, we should have just been talking about what – try. It's not easy, but try to say, you know what, man? This is what I like about Hillary. This is what I like about her. This is what she does positive for me. I think she's a smart woman. I think she cares about children. I think she cares about women. I think she cares about education. I think she cares about health care. I think she does. Yeah. I think she does. That's yeah. my feeling on her. Yeah, well, that's so, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have nobody. We keep there's so much hate and miss in in 
even like and I'm not saying you're doing it for that. Ah, the system's corrupt and we're gonna they're gonna shake it up and fix it. That's even like a bleak way of looking at things. Yeah, the system definitely is rigged. I mean, this is a, a thousand years old system. This ain't new. I mean, how old this system is has been rigged since the beginning. Right. You know what I mean? Anybody inside is fucking taking advantage. Yeah. They need more exposure, they need more transparency, and they need less hands in some shit, and they won't be so greedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, of course, that's stuff that needs to happen. So nobody can look at it like it's a, a, a system that's perfect. But to say it's a failed, broken system just means our – that doesn't say much for our, our world or our, our country. It seems like when we say it's a broken system, it seems like we are broken as a people. We're not really. That's just what you're being – we're being fed. Mm. We're not. I see good people. People are making a living. People are decent. Yeah, it's a struggle. People are getting by and enjoying life. And some people are really striving in life. Some people are making more money than they ever made. Yeah. The world isn't so dark. Yeah. I don't believe this world is so dark that we're fucked. It's tough, definitely done. We got to do, do away with the pol- political scene. Like, no, man. I don't believe it. I don't believe that. That's just I don't believe that. I won't. I won't believe that. Yeah, I try to be as trying to be optimistic. I that's the thing. I don't see any optimism. I just see all everybody's motivation is negative. No one's got a positive motivation. I guess it depends on your circumstance and what's been going on in your life. You know what I well, mean? I'm shit, you man. Anybody who looks at me knows my life's in the shitter. What the fuck? I'm gonna sit there and go, yeah, man. No, I'll tell you, my life is is I, it's not great, but it's. I'm not dying. Yeah. What the fuck? And all the people who are bitching on the negative side, they're not dying. I'm not saying your mother's bitching or your brother, but they're not, they're, they're not, their lives aren't at like wit's end and they need a way out. You know what I'm saying? Like my parents don't need a way out and they're hoping that this is it for them finally. Nah, but I don't think people are voting like that anyway. I need a way out. You know, it's just, you don't agree with what somebody stands for. Right. You know what I mean? I don't like it. I mean, listen, I'm voting for Hillary. I don't particularly like her I, or I would have voted for her in a primary. You would have, too. Right. Absolutely. If you particularly liked her. You just like her better than him. Yeah. Well, that's, if, if it mean, was if it, if it was an election, Bernie versus Hillary right now, if there Bernie. was like, of course. Yeah. So but he's not in my he's not my choice. He's right. not the option. I know. But so, I'm just saying, like, you know, you're voting for her ba- out of lack of option. No. Well, that's just the way. Elections work every time. So right, but I'm, yeah, no. it's just the way it is. Right. So I'm voting for her, not because I'm out of options. I have an option. I have two. No, options. not in your not in your mind though. It's not like you're hemming and hawing between him and her. No, it's like because, she's because, your best option. Because I like, I don't like anything he says, and I like things she says. That's, that's not really an option. That's like, oh yeah, I'm going to go with that person. I kind of okay. like what she yeah. says. No, oh, do I have a choice between her and Bernie? Oh, I'm gonna go with Bernie. I like everything. About, I like a lot more about him. But he's just not there. So, on um, I got this is my candidate that I can choose from, or this is my candidate I can choose from. Well, I don't yeah. like anything over here. I like some of the stuff over here. I'm gonna go that way. Yeah, but if it was her it's, versus Bernie, she's she's so much more Republican than Bernie at all. That's why like guys like Ted Alexandra and Bernie, like real hardcore Bernie supporters, have a hard time even voting for her because she is so far from what Bernie Sanders stands for. That if you stand for what Bernie stands for, it's weird to say you're for her. Only and the only reason why people are is because it's fucking Trump, because she's so far from what Bernie believes in. Well, I don't know. If she, you know I what I mean? Know. And that's what Bernie ran on the whole time. She's a corporate yeah. elitist who's basically a Republican. Who's who's in the pocket of the banks? You know what I mean? And it's like. Mm-hmm. It's against – she's basically a Republican. She's a Republican running against a psychopath right now that's way right. right. There's right. not even a Democrat in this race if you looked at the policies. You know what I mean? In the history. Right. Well, that's not 100 percent true. Oh, of course it is. No, it's not 100 percent true. No. The things that she fought for back in – like, you know, I'm not talking about – you know. I keep getting sucked back in. I hate this. I, 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 I don't even care. I don't even care. You know what? You're right. Fair enough. I'm not trying to convince I, you. No, I know. I don't even want to talk about it no more. It, 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 it but just, like, I, but I, I, it, my it, point it brings me down. Every time, my point being every time it comes right back out. It's not about the positives. It's about the negatives. 
It's always right to there. Because there are like, two candidates that have a ton of negatives. Right, but yes, but you can't go and go, I'm going to vote against that guy's negatives. I'm going to I have to find some things that she is good at. And yeah, oh, she's that horrible of a human. Then that's then you have no choice who to vote for. I do have a choice because I'm trying to find some positive things. That she do- is done. Yes, right, she but you is- can't overlook negatives. That's a, that's like a childish way of doing things. You have to look at negatives. You have to weigh everything and make an informed decision on everything. You can't be like, let me just see every. All right, oh, this guy murdered fourteen people, but look at all the stuff he's done since then. Like you can't you can't be like that. You know what I mean? You have to look at negatives and positives. You can't just okay. ignore negatives. I'm given two choices. I've looked. No, but if we're just going to talk about her, you just want to focus on one candidate at a time. No, you saying, have to look at the giving, fucking negatives. I was given two choices. I've gone through all the negatives of both choices. Right. Now you ask me, hey, who are you going to vote for? I'm going to vote for her. Why? Oh, well, let me go through all the negatives that she's done. I've already done that already, but I still landed on her. Yeah. All the negatives you want to pile on her still make me think – She's a better candidate than him. All the negatives. However, when I'm going to yell at the other side and go, this is why I'm voting for her, I'm not going to talk about his negatives. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to talk about his negatives. Yeah. That's, forget his negatives. Why are you voting for against Trump? I'm not voting against Trump. I'm voting for her. That's it. I'm voting for okay. her. What great things has she done? A couple of things that I enjoy. There's a couple. Yes. Is she not Bernie? No, she's not Bernie. I don't have him as a choice. I don't have him as a choice, and I can't be a Ted Alexandra where I feel really torn between voting for her. Then don't vote, Ted. I don't have to fucking tell you that she's that evil that you can't even vote for her. Then that's something you see that I don't see. Yeah, I don't know. I just vote that after next week's episode, we don't talk politics no more. <laughs> I'm bored with it. <laughs> I'm bored with it. Yeah, well, I just, I, 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 you know, what I, mean? not, I don't get bored of that kind of stuff. But you, if you do, I don't want to talk about it. No, I, I, I only, I like it, like a, you know, occasionally. I just feel like it just goes nowhere. You know what I mean? It just goes nowhere. I, well, I, yes, I feel like we just did a Facebook uh, back, like a fa- uh, equivalent of an annoying Facebook post to people. But that I'm are not, listening. the whole time, just so anybody who, if they do think that, I'm not trying to convince you to think like me at all. I don't want you to think like me. I want you to think like you. Yeah. But I also am not going to be ever going to be cynical right. and, and feel like there's no hope. I'm never going to be that. So that's never going to come from this end. I'm never going to be like, ah, no. over. Who cares? I can never. I don't do think that. they expect that from us. I just think they expect us to try and be, you know, a little humorous and, you know, tell our thoughts on things and tell some stories. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they get well, all the, they get all this shit on MSNBC and fucking Facebook boring fucking. They don't get they don't get real people who are in the middle of the world talking about it. They get fucking political pundits who are talking about it. Yeah. Or re, you, you, you can listen once in a while to real people having a real discussion of what they probably are talking about with their friends. Yeah. Everyone's having the conversation. It's not like, oh my God, no, do, I'm not telling anybody who to vote for or what to, how to vote. I'm just like, oh, no. this is why I'm, I'm happy about my candidate. Yeah. No, I'm voting for. I mean, you know, it's, I'm just sick of the whole process. I'm just, I'm, I'm over with. I want to, like, I want to, like, uh, get it's back a to like horrible I, I want, process. I want winter meetings in baseball to come back into my life, and I want to be watching that and reading about that. <laughs> this is a horrible process. This has brought some serious. I was talking to uh, Dan Wilson, and he was talking about his wife. I guess his wife is a Trump supporter, and she's like a really like a sweet woman, like your mom's, like some, just a Trump supporter. No big. Just because when you say Trump supporter, doesn't mean. A guy wearing a hood, carrying a burning cross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So his wife is a Trump supporter, sweet lady, but she's now no longer talking. Her like close cousin will never talk, doesn't want to talk to her again because she's voting for Trump. Like that, how like angry they got at each other. Yeah, but she's like I, her cousin doesn't even want to speak to her anymore. Like that's insanity. I don't. That's insanity to me. It is insanity. It's ludicrous. Like I would never delete someone off my Facebook for some of the insane horse shit I've seen out there by them. Yeah. But I will delete you if you tell me I can't speak about it. If you come on my wall and tell me I can't talk about what I feel because it's against what you feel, then you go. Yeah, you just ignore. But uh, but I watching people talk. I don't. I I can't see myself deleting people just because they're anti what I believe in. That's just. It's not. 
It's not happening. Everyone's allowed to think and feel the way they feel. Yeah. That's what I love about this country. We're all allowed to feel and, and believe and support who we want to. That, that's the thing. I don't care how much it doesn't make sense to me. Mm. I don't care. It, does, it doesn't have to make sense to me. It has to make sense to you. And you're not going to convince me that your way is right. I'm not going to convince you my way is right. So I never even try to. I don't want to. I just want to, I want to be able to say why I fucking like something. You know what I mean? And I want to hear why you like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. So so we're clear. Who do you like? Trump. Okay. That's all. Uh, you didn't know that? I you know, didn't get I that. I don't know if it was saying. clear. All right. I love Trump. All right. There you That's go. It. Make America great again. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I burped. Sorry, listeners. I should have went away from the microphone on that one. Did you have any fun shows this weekend? I don't know if anybody's still listening. <laughs> yeah, you got to get off that. What? Um, you, you got to get off that. Worry about it. Just talk. Who gives a fuck? Hopefully someone's listening. If you're not listening, then you're not listening. Who cares? All right. Uh, yeah, no, I had one show out on uh, – fuck. Did you do Dangerfield last night? At next Sunday. I, I thought, thought you posted uh, ah. I, I did post. I did. I did post it, and then I was laying in my bed, getting ready to get up, and I was like, hey, what? what's today's date? And then my son was like, the 6th. I'm like, I, I, why do I feel like it's the 13th that I'm supposed to be on the show? I looked at my calendar. It's the 13th. Typical liberal fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to know about Benghazi. That's why. Fucking. Fuck Benghazi. Ugh. Fucking email. Nothing you liberal pussies. Liberal pussies. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to go in, but I did not. Um, did you watch Walking Dead last night? I did watch Walking Dead last night. I'll tell you right now, and I, and I, Norman Reedus's performance last night of just being in that cell, not saying anything for pretty much 35 minutes of the episode. Yeah. was amazing. Oh, yeah. It was a good episode. I mean, just his acting ability. Was, yeah. The, everything came out in that. Yeah. No, it was good. Uh, so I'm learning an act like, like where one of the things we're doing in act class is like sit by like like go to an emotion without talking mm -hmm. and like just where everybody's watching in the class there's like eight guys in the class and the, you know in our in our coach she's watching and then you have to come up with an emotion and you come into the room and like kind of like just go through like a little exercise like maybe my exercise is is uh you know, folding paper, whatever the exercise, like, uh, I mean, I have to do a little activity. So maybe I'm folding my pants. That's my activity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And while you're doing that, whatever emotion that you felt that you were going through, you have to kind of live out in the moment and let us see you going through this emotion. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like him in that cell last night, just sitting and like before even he was given the picture of Glenn, just sitting and going, just, you could see everything going through his mind and like, just he played. He just you've seen his struggle. Mm. You know what I mean? In his face, I just thought it was great. Yeah, he was good. Good episode. Um, I like the season so far. Me too. You know that, that. Hopefully, next week brings back some real action. You know. Yeah, well, I think it will. Yeah, I hope it's not one of those seasons where it's like. There was Every that one season, it was like a lot this. of talking, a lot of no zombie, nobody killing nobody, no drama. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I get you're setting it up, but it's like I need. Well, no, yeah. Well, there was that one, yeah, that one episode, one season that like every week was spent with like a different character, mm -hmm. like in part of the world, right? Like, like one week there were like these two were walking through the woods talking for the whole episode, and then the next week, yeah, you know I mean, it was just like these two hanging out on a fucking porch. Like, come on, yeah. Yeah, but like this one, I think, yeah, it's all necessary to set up this world again. Like, it's the new world. Negan is the new, you know. Yeah, it's, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I love when he said, who am I? Who are you? And he just said, Daryl. I'm like, oh, man. you don't give a fuck about your bet. Yeah. Daryl don't give a fuck about Lucille, bro. Daryl doesn't give a fuck. I thought somebody was going to die last night because they were like, we have a surprise 
a surprise cast member. I'm like, um, who's dying? I just thought they were. Who was a surprise cast member? The broad. The broad. Why is she a surprise? I don't know. Seven words. This episode got a surprise. She and she's a, she's cuter on the show than when she tries to get all made up. Yeah. I like her plain Jane fucking apocalypse world. Not a <laughs> look at me. I'm hot. I got high boots on and I made my face up. High boots on. <laughs> nice. Um, did you watch? You didn't try Westworld yet? No, I've been so busy, man. I've really been busy. I did a lot of shows this weekend, so I've been. Uh, I did a well, story. Had- I did a storytelling show for the first time. How was that? Amazing, dude. They actually taped it. They, like, oh, you, nice. Like, you mind if we tape your set? Because we may use, you know, cut some chunks out for like promo for like future shows. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I go, you know. They're like, yeah, if, if you're not happy with it, you can tell us. And it was a sold out standing room only room at this place oh, called nice. Bunga's Den on 14th Street. It's okay. like nice stage. I probably, I don't even know, maybe 40 people. Right. But like, it's such a small room. It, and I went up and I, because I was telling the other the day before, I was kind of writing my story out a little more. See, and I'm like, right. you know what, man, you've told us this is a real story. You've told us for years. Just, so I said to myself, act like you're speaking at a meeting. Don't act, like, you know, because you're not right, a stand up. Right. Act like you're just telling the story. Right, right. So that's what I did. I just went up and I said, uh, you know, because I watched a few people do stories before me. A lot of the stories were funny. Some were serious, but I did. They, I didn't know when I was going up. He just kind of like brought me up. I, I right, right. I was fourth, fifth, or whatever. Um, because and uh, so I, I saw some techniques people use to set things up. So I just basically went up and set it up like you know, years nineteen ninety seven. I'm two years clean from drugs, but a boom, 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 and I okay. set this whole story. I they're gonna give me the tape. I was hoping to get it. I would have played the audio on the podcast. Maybe if I get it for next podcast, I'll play it. But I okay. did really well. I got a lot of laughs. Nice. And uh, people, what was it? The, the the prostitute story. The prostitute story. I've told it on my old podcast. Um, I did it now, at some mics in Jersey. But like, it's like when you're at stand up, when you're in a stand up setting, you can't work a story like that. But I'm watching these people kill with their stories, and I'm like, I think I like I really enjoyed this storytelling format. I'm like, I can develop longer stories here for my stand up act cuz it's like the audience is just they're they're it's they're ready for they're stories. Yeah, yeah, they're they're on the ride. They take the ride with it's you. It's not like a fucking cuz this one woman yeah. told a story about this like funeral but it was like a heartfelt story. Right. But it wasn't boring at all. Really engaged. You know what right. I mean? And like so I'm like, man, I'm going to and the people were very nice. These these storytellers are like actors, writers and storytellers. Right, right. And uh, it's not like that weirdness of like comedians. <laughs> Every, yeah, yeah. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> Everyone uh-huh. was very like supportive and nice. And I'm like, this might be something I'm going to use to develop material. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? It, it seemed like a cool format for me that I felt comfortable and it was almost like I was speaking. Now, when you tell the story, question for you. Yeah. You, do, does the, the story have a point of why you're telling it? Yes. Okay, so well, what it has a it has a um uh yeah, it has a a few points, but like uh the main thing was how like um like I, I wasn't really going for a theme, it's just a funny story. It just happened to have a point of see I don't want to tell you because it like kind of ruins the story if I play it next week for people. You know what okay. I mean? But yeah, I do have a point. There's like a okay. there's like a learning thing at the end of the story about That's what I'm saying. A, a learning thing about myself. If I told you it now it'd ruin the story i get it you know okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um i'll post it if the video is good i'll post it on my youtube channel i'm just waiting to get it but it's okay. definitely a cool format um yeah it's just it, it, it was like, kind of like eye-opening for me like oh wow this is something that i could use because i think this is something i've been looking for that i never knew right. was a thing to, right 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 to, it's more i if the, joey diaz had this storyteller it was so weird that he had him on this past week's podcast. So I was listening to it like the day before okay. I'm going to do the story thing. And the guy right. was a stand up who was on HBO, Showtime, clubs, but he could never do right. these stories in the clubs. Yeah, and now yeah, he yeah. sells out theaters telling stories. Okay. So his, his, uh, it's, I guess they're like one man shows, but it's just a bunch of different stories uh-huh. that they're fans of. And I'm like, what a cool concept that is. 
Right, yeah, yeah. Because like you're not gonna, you know, you're not going to a nightclub and fucking tell a story. No, it's not. If it's not hilarious drink. the whole way through. No, right. You got to add hilariousness. But yeah, Joe yeah. Diaz said he used to do storytelling. He said when he, because like Joe Rogan has said, like Joey Diaz, like for years was just struggling, couldn't find right. the thing to like really kill. Right, you know right. What I mean, but then Joey said he started going to the belly room at the comedy store doing storytelling shows, and that freed him to find out who he is because right. there was no stakes. It wasn't like the stand up stakes. Like it was a freedom where he can, you're not trying to get a laugh every 30 seconds. Right, yeah, he's trying to make a point of your story has to make a, has to have a point. Right, and if you can get to a point, you can make anything funny eventually. Yeah, or not. Even, yeah, yeah, just being. But he said it, it, it taught him how to be free on stage and more himself. Right, which took me a while to get to on stage. I'm just starting to get the t- just starting to taste it in the right, past right. two years. Right, I was so used to boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you're like, okay. I could, I don't have, like, I was astonished at, because I thought I was going to bomb. I was totally prepared to bomb. Right, like, right. I was emotional. Which is like you always are. <laughs> Not so much anymore. I got to say, <laughs> I've, I've really grown up in the past couple of years. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't go in defeatist anymore. Right, right. I, I really have, I don't take bombs hard no more. Like, because right. I go in, I'm, I'm like, I, I know how to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's a shitty environment, it's like, I'm not blaming myself for this horse shit place <laughs> you <laughs> right, know what right. i mean <laughs> yeah yeah like like i know i could do this but storytelling right. was different because you're like uh oh, yeah, cause I, cause get also because i mean when i booked it the guy's like you know you're not you're not gonna do stand-up act are you so i wanted to be cognizant to not be stand-up up there right 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 like that's why i told myself don't just act like you're speaking at a at a, at a recovery meeting right and this is part of a story you're telling to get to a point yeah 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 you know right yeah, and it and they were just they ate it up, and I'm like, oh my god, it, it was it, it was cool, man. It was a great experience. So I'm gonna. They told me, you know, if you ever want to, you know, you know, they do it once a month there to like, you know, just let us know if you ever want to come back and work on stuff, right? And then the guy told me about some other ones around the city that I'm gonna check out. Okay, so it may be a new thing I'm gonna try. It'll help me. I think it'll help grow my stand up show. Oh, good. I think. I mean, I can't hurt it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Positive way to look at it. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's not like a waste of my time. No, yeah. Like I, yeah. like I was sitting there. I'm like, you know what? Like I can go to some open mic and work on like a couple of bits that are 30 seconds each. But if I went to this place where they give me eight minutes right. to explore without – and they're actually attentive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was just a whole new. You're like, this is a workout. This is a real workout room. Yeah, yeah. They're they're not about pushing mozzarella sticks. They're not about pushing drinks. These people aren't coming here with an attitude. Make me laugh. Yeah, it's not challenging you. I'm like, this is a place to grow. Like, I just was really like, this is a place where you can grow as a performer. Right. Like, but you can tell. Like, I bet you know, because like there was this one kid. I mean, everybody was good. Which was, you know, but this one kid went up and he started off awkward and bad. And you're like, oh, my God, this kid's going to like, yeah, this yeah. is going to suck. Right. And I feel bad for him because I met him before the show. He's like a nice kid. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then once he got to like the this one reveal in the story. Right. Like the whole crowd went, oh. And then you saw him like get a little energy and then the yeah, rest yeah. of it soared. You're like, Yes. Like I was right, so right, happy right. for him that he was able to, because he was having a hard time getting to that, to the big yeah, yeah. reveal in the story. Right, right. And I was like, wow, it just, it just was cool, man. I felt like, uh, I felt like I was like in a class, like learning something. Right, right. Watching these dudes, like one dude told a story about, uh, you know, smoking embalming fluid, and nice. having a bad experience for the second time. <laughs> you know. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, How long were each story? They, they all do eight minutes? They gave you eight minutes. Everyone had eight minutes. They did would, they all do the whole eight or some of them did? Some some did the whole eight. I I think I I haven't I don't time mine yet. See, I wasn't sure how long my story was. Right. And uh so I'm curious to see how long I did. I thought I went over, but the dude said I didn't. So okay. maybe I went in at eight. Right, right. Because I saw he was like he was lighting people with his phone, but he was also taking some pictures, so I didn't know what was happening, but I was getting towards the end of my story anyway. 
Right. So right. it wasn't like I'm gonna prolong it. There was nothing it's to a add long to it. Story though, an eight minute story. Yeah, but yeah, it sounds long if you think about in terms of like stand up. You know what I mean? You're like, wow, right. eight minutes for one story. But when you're setting, because like when you go stand up, you get up, you go laugh, 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 laugh. Like we like this guy. Now we want to listen to the rest of what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're telling one story, you some need to set it up for a few minutes because they don't know right. who you are. You got to set the scene. It's like right, okay. It's, it's like doing a play. Right. You, you got to set the scenes because if like if I just went up there and like. Like most of my stuff was set up talking about that I was in recovery. I was young. I was doing the right thing. I just spoke at a meeting. I'm very okay. spiritual because yeah, yeah. right. it made it turned me into a character that right. shouldn't have been doing what he's doing at the end of the story. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, you know, which I could have set myself up that long in a stand up right. set. Now, if I was to do this material. In the stand-up set, I would have had to do like a ton of recovery. You really have to know where I was at, right? Humorously before I get into the hunk of this story. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know what I mean? But it's definitely interesting. I, it, it, it yeah, like some of these guys, I'm watching them. Uh, they remind me of like like that Mike Birbiglia, John Leguizamo. It's like they're not stand-ups; these are yeah, storytellers, right. right? You know what uh-huh. I mean? And they yeah, were yeah. good. Like I'm watching, like the. The dude who hosted it was really good. And like the dude who went after him was really the dude who went on before me. I'm like, holy right. fuck, this motherfucker can tell a fucking story. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? I'm like, wow. <laughs> and nice. I'm like getting nervous. You're like, Jesus. Is she up on the bed. He up on the bed? Yeah, yeah. he's up on the bed. Yeah. Justin must be home. But uh I'll uh I'll uh pop it into the uh podcast if I get it by next week. Nice. You know, we could uh dissect it or something. Nice. But uh, that's it. You should try storytelling. I think you'd be good. I am. I, I am. I, I, I want to. I can hook you up with this guy. They do it once a month. It's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, free. You right, know? right. And it's. My story wouldn't be my. St- if I had a story to tell, it would be uh, it would be about recovery. Be, but the story I would tell would be about uh, my father and and how he accepts recovery. Yeah, you could you you'll see though when you're up there because we're so used to muscling, like like we want to get a laugh. I right. I like I felt my body like oh my god I'm talking too long. Yeah, yeah some yeah. moments like we're I used need to, to trim muscle. The fat. Yeah, stories you gotta you gotta you gotta fluff them up more. Yeah, I felt it was pretty authentic. Me, I'm hoping it comes off on video. I hope it's a good video because I'd like to share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just to see what people think of it and shit. But uh, and they also do um. They do like uh like if you if you have like a sketch you wrote, you want people to read it, see if you, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. You could submit it to them and they get together every Sunday there. Oh, okay. And go over scripts and Oh nice. And it seems like a good group of people to get involved That's with. That's cool. And I went to the donut pub and that was good. The what? So the donut pub. Have you been there yet? The donut pub? No, they I mean Reed like, you mentioned it one time, Jim. Yeah, I had donuts there with her and her husband before my like show. Donuts? Don't you had donuts at the donut pub? Yeah. And, nice. co- and coffee. Are you a donut uh, person? Do you know who? No, I know, but I, you shock me sometimes. You're not a pizza person. You look like you'd be a pizza person, but you're not. Well, all right, you're right. You're, you're good on that one. I'm not a. I, I I'm not a. I don't. I can. Care, I like donuts. I'll eat them, but I'm not gonna. I don't go out of my way to get them. Right. I go out of my way to get them. Right. I yelp donut places. Yeah. I don't. So. I also. For not being a pizza person, last night could not stop craving a margarita pizza. So I ordered a pizza, a margarita pie. Oh. Me and my son split that shit. Yes, yes, that sounds sounds delish. I need pizza. All right, I should get pizza tonight. So, all right, everybody, thanks for listening. To this uh, extra long episode, hour and forty six minutes. Where am I? Where are you this week? This week, I okay. Hold so- on one sec. Just hold on. No, close the door. Close that door. <laughs> anyway. No, man. Come on. Um, All right. This week, if uh, so after Election Day, after we find out who our new ruler is, I will be at uh, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club Wednesday and Thursday. Bringing it to the people after the election. We'll talk about it. 
or we won't, okay. or, we'll, or we'll forget about it, which, which, whichever you people want to do. I don't oh, do after, political humor. After, let's just be done. Yeah, Wednesday and Thursday. Next, huh? Let's but be. the next podcast, like this is, we no longer mention the word candidate. Yeah, well, we may talk a little bit because we will. It'll be over, so next week we may talk about it. Attack. Yeah, we won't go long with it, but I'm saying my shows are after the election, so Wednesday, Thursday, come get the stink off your body from this election and come see me at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. I'm headlining. Uh, uh, Friday, I think Friday, I'm at. The, I'm doing some like private thing for a tennis organization. Uh huh. And then Saturday, I'm at. Uh, a ding for Rocco, but I think it's a private too. Sunday I'm at Dangerfields. Nice. That's it. Good stuff, man. Yep. Getting busier. Uh, no, but I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm every weekend's booked in November. Beautiful. And then, uh, and now December has got, you know, probably like three or four openings, but not much. Nice. Well, maybe I'll come hang with you on Sunday at Dangerfields. There you go. And uh, see what that joint is like these days. Yeah, yeah, it'll be cool, man. Grab some, maybe get some food. I hear some people are uh, coming back there. They're getting bigger crowds at Danger Fields. Oh, yeah. Well, they, I mean, they're producing shows like Sunday through Thursday. They got a producer who's, you know, got street teams and grabbing people and, you know, making and doing bringer shows, I think, a little bit here and there just to get audiences. Good, man. No, good. That's an iconic club and it deserves to try and get yeah. Re uh, rebirth. Yes, you know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes absolutely. just a change in thing can be enough to spark a new. Uh, yep. Change the way you do, change, do things. Change the way yeah. you do things. Get some younger blood in there. Just ch- you know what I mean. Sometimes yep. people do the same thing for so long. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but awesome. But, so go go see us, guys. Go to uh, mikegaffneylive dot com to see Mike's future dates. Go to joefernandez.net dot net to see mine. Please subscribe and rate the show on whatever platform you listen on. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to All in Our Heads.